hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. We may have our seats. It's great to be in the house of God this morning. God has been good to us, hasn't he? He has been faithful to us. And we want to thank God that the gates of hell cannot prevail. The church is moving on. Um, for the sake of the visitors, my name is Millicent Kaunda. I am born again. And I love the Lord. And I want to take this opportunity to thank God for our bishop and our mom who constantly give us an opportunity. And they believe in us even when at times we don't believe in ourselves. They believe in us and they cheer us up even as we continue serving in this vineyard. Christ is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to thank God uh, this morning. The topic that we want to handle is clear ground for yourself. The, the, the theme of the year is mounting up. As we mount up, we need to clear ground for ourselves. And the key scripture we will look at is Joshua chapter 17 from verse 12 to 18. Joshua 17 from verse 12 to 18. This is what the Bible says. Yet the children of Manasseh could not drive out the inhabitants of those cities. But the Canaanites were determined to dwell in that land. And it happened when the children of Israel grew strong that they put the Canaanites to forced labor, but did not utterly drive them out. Underline that. They did not utterly drive them out. They decided to put them in forced labor. Then the children of Joseph spoke to Joshua saying, why have you given us only one lot and one share to inherit? Since we are a great people in as much as the Lord has blessed us until now. So Joshua answered them, if, just look at that word, if, if you are a great people, then go up to the forest country and clear a place for yourself in the land of the Perizzites and the giants, since the mountains of Ephraim are too confined for you. But the children of Joseph said, the mountain country is not enough for us. And all the Canaanites who dwell in the land of the valley have chariots of iron. Both those, both those who are of Beth Sheen and its towns and those who are of the valley of Jezreel. And Joshua spoke to the house of Joseph, to Ephraim and Manasseh, saying, You are a great people and have great power. You shall not only have one lot, but the mountain country shall be yours, although it's wooded. You shall cut it down, and its farthest extent shall be yours. For you shall drive out the Canaanites, though they have iron chariots and are strong. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you for your word, because your word is power. And Lord, I just want to release myself this morning, that Lord, you'd use me as a vessel in your hands. Whatever is mine, Lord, I pray that you'll take away. And Father, just release that which is of you that I may speak to your people this morning. And so receive praise, receive glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This uh, story that we've read in Joshua chapter 17 is an account of Joshua and the Israelites after they had crossed the Jordan. They have come and surrounded Jericho and the Jericho walls have come down. And now they've been able to enter the land that had been promised to them. That had been promised to their forefather, Abraham. They entered right there. And from chapter 13 onwards, we see God commanding Joshua that it's now time to divide that land. 
And you know, as I read chapter 13, verse 1, it starts very interestingly. It says that, Joshua, you are now old, but there is yet land to be conquered. And you know, I looked at it and it sounded very interesting. So even God can look at us and see when we are growing old, you know. But he did not take that as an excuse. He did not tell Joshua, because now you are old, you are supposed to just live like that. He tells him, I know you're old. In other words, I know even your strength is going down. But there is still land that I need you to conquer. There is still land that my children, the Israelites, need to occupy. And so from chapter 13, the account of how that land is being divided goes on and on. And we come into this chapter 17, a very interesting chapter. There are several accounts that are listed there. I was looking at it and I was getting very excited because it's in chapter 13, land is being allotted. But when you look at the earlier verses of cha not chapter 17, when you look at the earlier verses of chapter 17, there you find a group of women, a group of ladies who, yes, they knew that ladies never used to inherit land in those days, but they were daring enough to confront Joshua, I mean Moses, in the earlier days. They were daring enough, and they were able to inherit the land alongside the sons. However, that is a story for another day. And so their land is being divided. And at, as it's being divided, the Bible says that uh, the house of Joseph, that meant the sons of Joseph, the house of Joseph were given an allotment. And now they are coming back to Joshua to tell Joshua, that which you've given us is too small for us. Why have you given us only one lot, yet we are very numerous? Yet the Lord has blessed us so greatly. Now when you look at verse 12, maybe we can just go there. At verse 12, chapter 17, verse 12, there's an account there. Yet the children of Manasseh could not drive out the inhabitants of those cities, but the Canaanites were determined to dwell in that land. These people have been given a land to occupy. And as you read the story early, earlier on, they were told that as they occupy the land that they are going to be given, they had a mandate, they had a responsibility of driving out all the Canaanites who were dwelling in that land. But the Bible here is telling us that they could not drive out the inhabitants of that city. Buanaeswasifiwe. Then when you get to verse 13, when they realized they could not drive them out, they started feeling pity for them. That's my imagination. And they decided that they're not utterly going to drive them out, but they are going to put them in forced labor. And though they were in forced labor, these people were going to continue dwelling in their midst. Bonus, if you will. They were still continuing dwelling in their midst. In other words, the land that they were given, they had now to share it with the Canaanites whom they had put in forced labor. And I was looking at the map, the map of the place that had been divided for them. And I realized Ephraim and Manasseh actually had the biggest chunk of land compared to the other tribes. Yet they could come to Joshua and complain that the lot that they had been given was way smaller. Why was it small? It was small because they decided they are not driving out the inhabitants of the land and occupy it totally. They decided they were going to share the land with those inhabitants. And many times as Christians, the Lord gives us various commands in our lives. He gives us various responsibilities that if we would only obey and follow to the letter what he has commanded us to do, then we will end up living a victorious life. But at times, we find it so hard to obey God fully. We will obey him, but in, with incomplete obedience, just like the Israelites had done, the house of Joseph had done. And so as a result, they were having to be squeezed within a space because they had allowed the Canaanites to continue living with them. 
But they come to Joshua and they're telling Joshua, how come you've given us only one lot? Yet the Lord has blessed us. Yet we are a people so numerous. Joshua goes back to them and repeats the very word to them and is telling them, if you are a great people, then get into the forest and cut the land for yourself. The word if to me sounded like a sarcastic word. Why then can't you go and cut for yourself? And why was Joshua talking like that? Joshua already knew that the land that they had been given was so big, but they were not willing to work at it. They were not willing to obey completely. They were not willing to walk the extra mile. They were not willing. Amazingly, any time when the Lord promises us to give us something, he won't give you something that is unoccupied. He told the Israelites, I will give you a promised land, a land that is flowing with milk and honey. And at some point, Moses is sending the, the, the spies to go and check on that land that had been promised to their forefathers. And they are finding, yes, the land is there. Yes, the land is fertile. It has fruits. It has milk and honey. But there was one thing that was going to be a challenge. The land was occupied. It had occupancy. And it was not occupied by people who looked weak. It was occupied by some people who looked healthy. People who had eaten well of the fertility of that land. The Anakims were in that land. They were giants. Anakims were the people who, from whom uh, the, the, this giant guy, uh, Goliath, had descended from. They were big. And so as they looked at that land, yes, they desired to occupy it. But the Bible says in the book of Numbers that they looked like grasshoppers in their own eyes. It's not those people who called them grasshoppers, but it is them who look like grasshoppers in their own eyes. Why? Because of the kind of people who were occupying that land at that time. Some of the spies that were sent even said that the land is devouring its own people. They had every kind of discouragement to give the Israelites as they brought back the report. In this year, we've been given a word. We've been told we will mount up as we wait on the Lord. We will mount up with wings like eagles. But I want to tell you, after the Lord has spoken that word, we will mount up. It will be so sad if you will sit back and wait to mount, mount up with wings and do nothing about it. One has a few. These guys had been, had been promised that there was a land they were going to occupy. A land that was flowing with milk and honey. And the Lord had even promised them that I'll drive out the Canaanites from that land. But you know what? God usually enjoys partnering with you and with me. Yes, he was going to go ahead of them. He was going to drive them out of this land. But he needed a partnership. Just like he needs a partnership with you today. He has promised many things for your family. But he needs you to partner. He has promised many things for our nation. But he needs you to partner. He has promised many things for our church, but we need, we must partner with him. Praise the name of the Lord. We must partner with him and fight for that which belongs to us. We must fight. For the Israelites, the tribes that were willing to fight, they got the inheritance. The Bible says in the book of Joshua, chapter 15, verse 14, Caleb went to Joshua and told him, give me that mountain. It had been promised to me 40 years ago. And now by the time uh, Caleb is going to ask Joshua for the land, it is 45 years later, Caleb is 85 years old, if he was 40 then. But he's saying, 
I am strong and more than able to get this place. And in verse 14 of Joshua chapter 15, the Bible says that Caleb was able to destroy all the three groups of Anakims. All the three groups. In other words, the Anakims, the giant-like looking beings, existed in three groups. And the three groups must have had different characteristics. But Caleb was not willing to spare any one of them. Was it easy to drive them out? No. He put his things in order. He put his army in order. And this one thing he knew was that I am not going to dwell with these people in the same land that has been, has been given to me as an inheritance. I have to drive them out so that I can gain complete occupancy of the area that the Lord has given to me. He destroyed the three groups of Anakims. But for Manasseh and Ephraim, they have been given the hill country, but they have sat back expecting Joshua to do the clearing for them, expecting Joshua to give them this land on a silver platter. No, it does not happen like that. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know what it is that the Lord has ever spoken to you and you've been sitting back. Maybe it was a word of prophecy. Maybe it was a word that he gave you as you were in prayer. Maybe it was just a word someone was sent to come and tell it to you and you've been sitting back waiting for this thing to come to pass. It's time to arise so that we can clear the land for ourselves. The Lord says, I will be with you. As you step out to begin clearing that land for yourself, as you start walking up the mountain, yes, it will involve a lot of energy spiritually, but as you continue moving step by step, the Lord says, I am with you until you are able to conquer the land that I've given to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's amazing. These guys are being told, go and clear the land for yourselves. But when you get to verse 16 and 17, they are telling Joshua, but the place you are telling us to go and clear, the mountain is so confined to us. Yet, they are saying that in the valleys, because the valley also belonged to them, the valleys are occupied by the Canaanites who have chariots of iron, who had allowed them in the first place to own that valley. It was them. It was them. But they are complaining. They need another place so that they can move to that other place while leaving this place that they should have cleared, a place that had been destined for them by the Lord God Almighty. They are leaving it for the enemy to continue dwelling therein. Interesting. They are afraid that the Canaanites have chariots of iron. Yet, these very Canaanites with their chariots in the days past, they had destroyed them. These very Canaanites were the people they had subdued when they brought the walls of Jericho down and they gained entry with such victory. They were forgetting too fast that the Lord had been with them. So they go to Joshua. The Canaanites have chariots of iron. And you know, Joshua is a type of Jesus in our times. He's a type of Jesus in our times. How many times do we run to the Lord and we tell him, Father, my marriage is not working. Father, my workplace is not working. Father, I am not able to grow. Father, you know, you tell God, you tell the Lord Jesus so many things. And all he's telling you is, I have given you power and authority. Hallelujah. I have given you power and authority. You can have that power. You can have that authority. But unless you're willing to use that power, unless you're willing to use that authority, it will just be an icon in your life, but never be of benefit for you. Hallelujah. 
it is time for us to arise in this year 2021 so that we can gain occupancy. Everything that you need is within you because the Lord has deposited it within you. And something else we need to realize, as we will be stepping into that promised place that the Lord has been speaking about, he says, I will be with you. I will be with you. He can never allow us to go on our own because he knows the weaknesses that are within us. Hallelujah. What was expected of the Israelites? Just want to look to a, a few points of some of the things that were expected of the house of Joseph. And those very things are expected of you and I, if we will ever mount up. A few Sundays ago, a bishop was speaking and he said, yes, it's the year of mounting up. But some of us will not mount up. And as I sat there, I said, no, not my portion. Not my portion. I will mount up. Whatever it takes to mount up, I will mount up. Number one. They were expected to live in complete obedience. Complete obedience. Realize Incomplete obedience will keep you from being all you can in life. Incomplete obedience will cause you not to be able to release your full potential. Incomplete obedience. I was reading the book of First Samuel chapter 15. And we get an incomplete obedience in that place. When Saul had been told to wait for Samuel. They are going into battle. He's been told to wait for Samuel to go and offer the sacrifice. And he feels he cannot no longer wait for Samuel. He feels he is equally anointed like so Samuel is anointed. And he goes ahead to offer a sacrifice that he was not meant to offer. The second thing he does, he is told to completely destroy the people, the enemy. He was to completely destroy everything, including the gods, including the cows, whatever else. But you know what the Bible says? He kept some. And when Samuel is appearing to him, Samuel is telling him, how come I am hearing the bleating of sheep? How come I'm hearing the moving of cattle? There are times when we go before the Lord and we are telling him, Lord, we have walked with you. We have walked in complete obedience. But the Lord Jesus is looking at us and saying, how come I can hear the bleating of sheep? Incomplete obedience is disobedience. Incomplete Incomplete obedience is the same as disobedience. And no wonder, in that book of 1 Samuel chapter 15, the scriptures say that obedience is better than sacrifice. God honors obedience. It might be in very small things, but he honors obedience. Victory is what our commander has charged us with. For us to be able to mount up with wings and become victorious in 2021, then we must totally obey what our commander Jesus Christ has released for us. Because the Lord Jesus is never happy or satisfied with mediocrity. He wants complete obedience. There is no backing up, there is no backing down, and there is no compromise. Whether we are old or we are young, the word of God stands 
Remember there's a day when mom, mom, Pastor Alice was telling, I don't know where he, she spoke, but I remember those words very clearly, that the word of God is not gender sensitive. It is not age sensitive. The word of God is absolute. Whether we are young or we are old. So there is no compromise. Manasseh was comfortable to let the Canaanites stay in the land. They didn't take God literally or seriously and therefore they never obeyed the Lord. Are there things that the Lord has been commanding us to shed off, to remove from our lives? God means it. He's very serious about it. And no, he will never understand. If you don't obey, he will never understand that you are keeping on maybe with this relationship you are keeping on with this friend that the Lord has said this one is not the best one for you and by the way when I'm talking about friends some of the friends will be just ordinary friends you know not boyfriends not girlfriends no I'm talking of relationships in general and God is telling you, this one will not take you to the destiny that I have designed for you. Let them go. And you're like, God, you know, oh, you know, let me just keep them a little bit. God will not understand. He will never. If he has said, put them aside, then put them aside. A story is told of a, a certain family. They pet everything. Even those things that are not petable, you know? So they decided to go to the uh, bush and pick a, a lion cub. They picked a lion cub and it was a pet in their house. And uh, in, the due, in due time, there was a baby born in that house. And so one day the baby was sleeping in the crib. True story. The baby was sleeping in the crib. And so this family, the couple decided to cross in the, the next apartment so that they can visit a neighbor. And as they went visiting at the neighbor, the cub also got freedom to roam around. So it was roaming around. And suddenly they heard a scream of someone in bad pain. When they came running, they found the cub was busy chewing the fingers of their baby, their newborn. They had petted the wrong thing to pet. I normally say, <laughs> watch her to pet zile vitu zinawezekana. Personally, even a cat I don't want to see in my house. <laughs> I just don't like them at all, you know? Petting something that is not the right pet, will ultimately eat you up. It might chew your fingers. It might chew your family. It might chew your finances. That thing that you have been keeping, maybe someone has ever told you, maybe even our pastors, our bishop have spoken about it here, but you keep on saying, God will understand. Let me tell you, that is what will cause you not to mount up in this year. It could be a sin that you're petting. Dambi tu. Ayonekani kubwa sana. As if there's normally a big sin and a small one. <laughs> it will cause you not to mount up in 2021. Deal with it. Utterly drive it out. One as if you Put it aside totally. And destroy it so that you will enjoy your fellowship with the Lord. What as if you were sana? We keep hearing young ladies say, This brother is nice, he is very sweet, he can take me out to Java. I know he's not born again, <laughs> but I'll preach to him <laughs> when we get into the house. Ask those who have been married to them. They will tell you the truth of what happens because your house can never be a crusade ground. One has a few. 
Do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. You're a child of the kingdom. Walk like a child of the kingdom. They could be born again, but they have this habit that you know very well, I cannot be able to live with this habit. Run for your life, my sister, my brother. Run for your life. It could be the girlfriends we keep as married women. You keep on being around them, but majority of them are those who have decided they cannot stay in their homes. They went and divorced. As I grew up, I thought the scripture, bad company corrupts good morals, was for teenagers. But as I've grown up, I've discovered it is for everybody. One has a few. The company you keep, the chamas you go for, those meetings as men that we go for, what kind of value are they adding? Could they be the lion pet, like the one that was petted by that family? Could it be what will leave you on the ground, the weight that will leave you on the ground that will cause you not to take up onto the skies? Clear ground for yourselves. Those are the trees that we need to clear out totally. Those are the Canaanites that we need to drive out utterly so that we can be able to occupy the land that the Lord has given to you, the land that God has given to me, so that we can be able to enjoy the fullness of the Lord's goodness. The land you have been given and the land I have been given is not small. It is sufficient. It is enough. If we were going to drive out all those occupants of that land, it will be so much enough for me and my family. It will be so much enough for you and your family. Come on, arise and drive them out. Drive them out. Come to a moment where we nowadays don't call it sin. We call it issue. A panacea issue. Hallelujah. Number two. Number two that will help us occupy our land is for us to live by faith. Live by faith. In other words, what am I saying? Did you hear the Lord speak? Did you hear him clearly? What did he say? What did he say? The book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9. Joshua was told something. Joshua 1, 9. He was told something by the Lord. And the Lord is saying, have I not commanded you? In other words, it is me, the Lord God of all the universe, who is giving you this land. It is me who has now given you the leadership since Moses has died. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Living by faith. Did he conquer something yesterday? Something that was causing you to be afraid? Look back at the things that he conquered and raise an altar in that place and begin moving ahead and saying, because the Lord was able to heal yesterday, because he was able to help me cross the river yesterday, he will help me cross this one that is ahead of me. Joshua needed to cross the Jordan River, but he had to remember that it is the same Lord God who is saying, I am with you, who was able to help them cross the Red Sea. And so he could have confidence in him. He could have faith in him. He could have trust in him that even this Jordan that was facing them, they were able to cross. Is he not the same Lord God who helped us cross last year? during the pandemic? Is he not the same, same God who caused us to be the remnant of 2020? When he says we are mounting up, then we will mount up in the name of the Lord. Live by faith. And finally, you have been given power. You have been given power. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 says, 
I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can mount up with wings like eagles through Christ who strengthens me. I will overcome the storms and mount up and fly above the storms through Christ who strengthens me. That power has been released to you. That power has been released in me. And he who has the, uh, the total power, the Bible says that he dwells in us. Scriptures say that greater is he who is in, in me than he who is in the world. And so whether the world will present itself with things that are very fiery, I will arise, I will walk past all those things that are scary because I know that the master of the universe, my commander, is holding my hand and walking through to the destiny that he promised. The Israelites, they were told, go round the wall of Jericho. Must have been th something that was scary. Had they walked around another wall and it collapsed? No, they hadn't. But you know what? In the process of them walking, their leader Joshua comes across the Lord of hosts. The Lord God who had come to be with them, to fight on their behalf. So as they were going around the wall of Jericho, this Lord of hosts, the King of kings is his name, the almighty God, the unchangeable one, was going to be with them. And it was his responsibility as the Israelites obeyed to the letter what they needed to do. It was the responsibility of God to ensure the wall comes down. Wana asifiwe. Drive them out. Live by faith. And walk in power and authority. In the name of the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless you because you are good. Thank you, King in glory. Because you have given us an inheritance. And Lord, yes, part of the inheritance could be occupied. But we are walking right there in power. We are walking right there in authority. And Lord, we are driving out every inhabitant, oh God, that has been existing in our allotment. Because we will not share our allotment with the enemy. We will not share it with anyone else. We are clearing the ground for ourselves. Lord Almighty, as we trust in you, because your word says you will be with us to the end of time. Father, we bless your name. Thank you for my brothers and my sisters. Won't you give us the will, oh God, to be able to clear everything the way you have commanded us to, oh God. And so receive every praise, receive every glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.